Right, gentlemen, it's not leaving. Vote number one is number seven on your program. Between, in the blue corner, representing the RAF, Kieran Bailey. And in the red corner, representing Emrose, Connor Gray. Gray in the red, baby in the blue, three, three in the red. Well, a warm welcome to you all once again here at the Bristol Sporting Club from the Bristol Hotel. We're underway with the first show of 2019. This is Nigel Turner with you and alongside me is Craig Turner. And once again, no relation. We're still looking through the ancestry there, but we're definitely not connected. And the first bout then is the first of a mini match between the Western Counties and the RAF. Uh, Craig Kieran Bailey for the RAF and Connor Gray for Emeralds. And here we are underway. Craig, you'll tell us a little bit about both these guys. Yeah, good evening, Nigel. Uh, we've uh, senior air craftsman Kieran Bailey, the Royal Air Force, an engineer in the, the Royal Air Force from the Blue Corner, and Connor Gray from the Emeralds Club in uh, Chippenham. Connor's 21 years of age, 38 contests. These guys are uh, another way around. They've been around for a little while. As you can see there, Connor Gray, south ball, right hand, right foot forward. Interesting start, first fencing for the uh, for the opening, and I know both guys can punch, so uh, don't blink, Nigel. <laughs> okay, so we certainly will try not to, so the first of some really competitive matches we think here tonight, and I say it's a mini match this between the Western Counties and the RAF, and uh, both these going at it hammer and tongs early on. Bailey for the RAF for trying to avoid that fierce counter from his opponent Connor Gray. Bailey looking to go downstairs and then a little combination. Just uh, trying to work one another out at the moment. Hush descends over the room as the two boxers go to work. Good fast hands from Bailey. Good movement from both boxers here, Craig. Yeah, this is class. You can see the action is just starting to slow now as the guys step off and uh, start picking their shots. Good head movement there. Kieran Bailey's got that switch off there, which uh, on more than one occasion I've told him about when I've coached him previously. <laughs> But uh, as you can see, both guys, the adrenaline is just dispersed a little bit now and they're settling down to their work. Yeah, so good movement, evading the punches, but uh, also anticipating what's coming next and looking for an opening to throw some of their own. There's a good jab coming out from Bailey once again. Nimble foot movement. Turns round in the centre of the ring. Very noticeably, they both maintain that centre of the ring. Not an awful lot of work on the rope so far. A little bit cat and mouse, but uh, good right hand coming in from Bailey for the RAF. Coming towards the end of the round. Both working hard. Good foot movement, good head movement as well. Ten seconds till the end of the round. Looking for a good finish there, Bailey trying to turn his man. And there we are, the uh, bell goes to end the first session of that, that contest and pretty evenly matched, Craig. Very much so, there's a bit of everything there, a bit of boxing, we had some work on the inside, no, yeah, great start. And as you can see, as the round went on, the guys kind of settled down a little bit, started uh, relaxing, and we saw some great defences and offensive boxing. Squadron leader Andy Parker there for uh, the Royal Air Force, a former professional boxer, Liam Lathbury taking charge of the Emerald Corner. I should imagine Andy Parker will be telling Kieran to move left, stock answer against the south pole, move to the left, throw the right hand, but certainly if he moves the other way he's going straight on to the south pole left hand, dangerous stuff. And they'll be telling the Emeralds guy to up his pace, try and go with the second phase of attack, go then go again, try and disrupt Kieran's movement, but very evenly matched and all to all play for. 
And as we've mentioned previously last year anyway, that uh, RAF boxing having a bit of a renaissance at the moment, isn't it? Very much so, that's due to the efforts of uh, squadron leader Parker and uh, squadron leader Carl Welly, who uh, worked very, very hard to uh, build a very, very good squad, including Ricky Lyon, top liner, and young Kieran Bailey, and our own Brad Axe, you remember, from Yoga. So, uh, as I say, all credit to them. At the moment, uh, I think they're involved a lot in the Inter-Services Championships, which is why I can't have a, a full team here tonight. But it's good to see, I think, three RAF contests here. And this is certainly keenly contested between Bailey and Conor Gray. Bailey in the blue for the RAF. Conor Gray, the Southpaw in the white vest, the Western Counties vest. For the home side, so to speak. Both busy fighters. Gray looking to get inside and work to the body, but fast hands and fast movement from Bailey. Right hand looking useful from Bailey there. Got through a couple of times. Got some good defensive work from both boxers going in here. Keeping up a reasonable pace as well at the moment. Another good right hand from Bailey. To gloves up from Gray to protect himself. It's getting a little bit messy inside there, but again, Craig, as, as I mentioned in the first round, they're, they're more or less in the centre of the ring the whole contest, aren't they? That's right, and when it looks like someone's going to take a backward step, uh, the head goes out, the feet come round, and just quickly reverse. That's a nice left hook there from Kieran Bailey. Stock answer to the south pole, right hand, left hook, and uh, very effective there. Good just goes to show there is no need to be up against the ropes all the time, is there? No, in actual fact, no good can come of it, Mike, uh, as we've seen time and again. And, uh, the idea being that if you can box in the circle rather than the square, straight lines are the boxer's enemy. And uh, straight lines in, straight lines out, and uh, straight lines on the ropes. No good's going to come of that. You need lateral movement to attack and defend. So we had a little uh, coming together just, just there as uh, Bailey went to the canvas. It was just a, a slip. They got in a bit of a tangle, the two of them. Straight back into action again. Jab from Bailey. Just making Gray wary as he comes forward. Again, he tries to get in there, but caught on the turn, a little bit off balance, and Bailey connects a couple of times, so he's working hard, the RAF man here. A little bit of a punch in the kidneys there, actually. But, um, Gray being told not to turn around. Face up to the oncoming assault, and there's the uh, bell to end round number two. All very amicable and in a great spirit this one, but uh, they know, both know they're in a contest. Very much so. This is quite a tough one, but it, they're maintaining a very high standard of skill. And you've just seen there a little stance switch in that round from Conor Gray. Just trying to confuse Kieran Bailey momentarily and had some success with that as well. Uh, Kieran straight back to work. For me at the moment, Kieran's got the better shots, the more positive shots. But uh, Conor Gray still very much there, and uh, being an Emeralds guy, he'll be superbly fit, and uh, he'll keep punching right to the last bell. It's a great contest, very, very good start to the match. Would these two have met before, Craig, do you think? I don't think so. Uh, the Emeralds Boxing Club have recently come back from another uh, body yeah. within the sport, and uh, Kieran obviously being a service boxer couldn't have been involved in that. So uh, I, I don't think they've met before, but I'm certainly glad on, to have on this occasion because it's a great advert for the game. Yeah, so it is. Good. Really good, skillful start to the evening. If you're uh, watching here and looking at the top table guests behind the, uh, the ring, yes, it is Keith Curl, the former Manchester City and England defender. Of course, Bristol City and Bristol Rovers he played for as well, but back to the boxing in the middle and frantic third round here. Bailey looking to unload with that left hand once more. Marginally the busier of the two and the more effective of the two at the moment, I think, Bailey. Getting in little combinations there. Trying to get on top. Good movement. Swayed back to avoid the right hand of Connor Gray. 
both very, very busy boxers here. Over the top by Bailey. Bailey trying to put combinations together. Throws the right, uh, the left hand, then the right. Just making Connor Gray miss a few times now. In this uh, final round, it's certainly Bailey who's been more of the aggressor, I think, Craig. Very much so, and it's quality shots that the judges are still on, the most effective shots, and they're definitely coming from Kieran Bailey. Uh, Connor Gray there. Again, he comes back with his own good quality shot. It's a lot to play for there. I think the extra experience, because Kieran's been around a little bit around the club circuit as well as with the RLF. The, the more um, varied competition yeah, probably shows here. But as I say, Conor Gray by no means making the numbers up. This is competitive right till last bell. Certainly is. Bailey, one feels just accelerating down the home straight. Really impressive compact performance. Uh, referee calls a halt, a bit of a tangle. Bailey retrieves his left arm and now straight back into the scrap. And Good, good work by Connor Gray there as well, throwing out plenty of leather. Bailey coming in, looking to land some shots of his own. Some solid shots from both boxers landing. Big left hook missed by Connor Gray there. Punishment returned from Bailey. Ten seconds to the end of the round. And for the first time really in the entire contest, Gray backed up onto the ropes as the bell sounds. And uh, both of them breathing pretty deeply there after what was uh, an extremely competitive and uh, physical in a sense of always being active sort of round. That's right, there's three three-minute rounds and it was very, very busy from the opening bell. And I said that, not at all messy. And as you quite rightly say, Nigel, we didn't see any action off the ropes uh, because it was continually moving rotationally. So uh, there's a lot of good technical stuff there and it's a great start. So let's see what our judges thought of that one. Thank you, Gentlemen. Result vote number one is a unanimous decision to Kaylee in the blue corner. Who's up next? Good on, chat. That's it, lovely. That's it. Look at me. Smile, jog, look at this guy. Come on, and again, perfect. So here we are with the second bout on the card tonight, the first uh, Bristol Sporting Club uh, boxing show of 2019. We've already seen one very exciting and fairly close uh, contest, uh, Craig, haven't we? And that, that was a good start to the evening. And now we've got uh, the uh, challenge belt at lightweight between uh, Elliot Watts in the red corner from the uh, Yeovil Amateur Boxing Club and Kai Avery of the Barham Club at uh, Barnstable. Both boxers in uh, black, but uh, it's Avery with the red trim and uh, black and white for the Yeovil boxer Elliot Watts. Uh, young Craig, what can you tell us about these two? Well, I can tell you that um, young Kai Avery is a very busy boy, Rich. We, uh, one of my guys boxed him only just uh, on Saturday. 
and uh, boxed very well down there in Barham. Uh, Kai is 22 years of age, he's had 29 contests and he's kind of have gloves will travel kind of guy, he's uh, very very busy. And we've Elliot Watts from the Oval Amateur Boxing Club and uh, Elliot possibly one of the most belligerent men I've ever seen enter a boxing ring. He's very very tough, won't go quietly and this is well worth the uh, 56 to 60 lightweight championship belt of the Western Counties. A very even start as we saw indeed to the first contest here tonight. Both the boxers trying to dominate the centre of the ring but uh, very very even early on and both getting in some uh, quality shots Craig. That's right, just there it's quite tidy. The guys are comparative novices still, just with 29 bags. As you can see Ivory is the aggressor trying to force the pace whereas uh, Elliot tries to get behind the jab. Well, you get the impression where these guys could do this all night because it is that closely matched. Really. Both look strong certainly in these uh, early stages as they should do but uh, um, very well matched and uh, at the moment it's very difficult to tell who's going to prevail in this contest. Uh, some good work from both boys and uh, it may be a case of who gets the, the first real quality shot in to stop the other one because they're both pretty active at the moment. Absolutely, I'm just going to say just a little technical point there Elliot does come out with a clinch with his head very high he's just worn a left hook albeit glancing uh, but he does come out very very high perhaps something to look for all action again in this second contest of the evening at the uh, Bristol Sporting Club I say the first uh, sporting club show of the uh, new year or not 2019 and uh, we're getting some really really hot action right from the start so. Watts trying to get more on the front foot, he's, he's uh, meeting a barrage of punches each time he, he goes in. It's this real battle for ascendancy at the moment. Without doubt, uh, both guys want this. There's a lot of kudos attached to these championship belts. And uh, I say value for money there, a little bit messy on the inside. Uh, this our official will uh, break the guys up. Yeah, that was the first real clinch of the, of the fight. and, they've, and, they're, and uh, the referees let it go on, but uh, don't want to see too much of that, but a really, really a competitive uh, opening round. Did you score it even? I think I'm going to go blue, Rich. Uh, the reason being, I really like to go at life. <laughs> and uh, I think the better quality shots just for that round just came from Kai Avery. So what do you think is going on in the Watts corner at the moment? Then what will they be saying to him? Yeah. Well, my good friends Dave Nardiello and Dean Trott from Yeovil will be telling... Uh, young Elliot just to keep his head down to try and get behind his long levers get behind the range because he boxes superbly well he's very technical when he's allowed to and uh, over in the bar and corner ex-professional Gavin Lane will be telling young Kai to try and force the pace a little bit more because I fancy physically he is that bit stronger on the front foot Rich. It could come down to strength in the end because they both exerted a lot of energy in that first round. Very much so and uh, the, the guys are comparatively new to 3-3 three, three minutes and that is a long time, believe you me. So we're coming up to round two then in this lightweight uh, challenge belt uh, bout. Uh, Elliot Watts of the Yeovil uh, Amateur Boxing Club in the black and white uh, strip and uh, he's up against Kai Avery from the Bearham Club at Barnstable. And we've had a pretty even first round but uh, possibly Avery just uh, shading it and Watts has got a bit of work to do in this uh, this second but very much a similar pattern straight away right at each other's faces and uh, there's uh, no quarter being asked or given here. Very much so you can see the tension in, in the guys work how much they want it and uh, very good tight guard there but the head's still going back there from uh, from Elliot Watts. That's that's danger when you've got a front foot boxer such as Kai Avery in front of you. You mentioned that before and he's got caught again there, doesn't he? Just just stepping back and uh, that, that is, as you say, I'm sure his corner have made that point. But uh, easier said than done perhaps with a, with a guy like Avery who's mounting uh, some strong attacks now and uh, maybe just be starting to take control of uh, this uh, very, very good second bout of the evening. And it, fo it followed a good first one and we're getting plenty of entertainment already at the Bristol Sporting Club tonight. A lot of close contact work, isn't it, uh, Craig? There's not really been uh, somebody really landed a clean, really clean blow yet, but uh, a lot of strong stuff being done on the inside. 
That's right, and it's wearing stuff. If you're getting uh, arms and gloves hit, it still takes a lot out of you, very tiring. As you say, the judges need clean shots, effective shots. And uh, as I say, some of them there, not strictly in the target area either. But uh, again, both guys really, really want it. So uh, they're going to be that bit tenser. And nobody really performs at their best outside the gym because it's all comfort zone. But uh, as I say, everything the box for here, there's the head going high yeah. again. Really got to watch that. Watts has really tried to um, force the pace this this uh, round, but he's, he's, as you say, getting clipped each time he steps back. Uh, some really good work uh, from Avery. And uh, again, Avery maybe just edging it. Again, Watts trying to get on the front foot. He's, he's, he's doing his best to sort of reverse the trend of the first round and get, and get, uh, get in uh, Avery's face. If you were to see uh, Elliot Watts when he stands off and uses his jab, he's got very, very effective straight shots. But how difficult is it to do that, Craig, when you're up against an opponent like this who's, who's basically coming in like a bull at you for all the time? So. Uh, yeah, because Kai very cleverly is smothering the work, taking the, the range away from Elliot Watts. And uh, there you can see a very, very good jab. But once again, Kai taking the punch and range away from him. I imagine that's part of the plan for Kai Avery because he's been right up close with uh, Watts at every, every possible opportunity. This could well come down to who tires in the third round because they've expended a lot of energy in these first two break. Very much so. The level of fitness even for, as I say, relatively uh, novice boxers is very impressive. Amateur boxers, the fittest athletes in the arena. And uh, I think we can see why at, <laughs> at this point. It reminds me why I gave up. Really. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how do you see the contest at this stage? At this stage, marginally as before, I think the cleaner shots, the more effective stuff is going to Kai Avery on this occasion. Elliot Watts won't be denied, but again, he's been thwarted a little bit by not being able to use his long arms. And uh, that's quite clever from Kai Avery. Yeah. He would have liked to fight at distance, Watts, you think? Very much so, with uh, some, some tight angles change of movement, change of patterns, because if you were to look in the next round, Kai Avery's actually working in straight lines on the attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would be there for an angle switch from Elliot Watts and a counter shot. But at the moment, unfortunately, uh, Kai's just a little bit too quick for his feet and taking the range away prior to Elliot being able to move. Final round then, and uh, you still think that maybe it's close enough that if one could really dominate this round, then uh, maybe it, uh, the result could be turned around. But uh, just I, I agree with you, Craig. I think Avery's just done the better work so, so far. Um, our guest of honour tonight, Keith Curl, has been enjoying every minute of this. As a footballer, he was phenomenally fit, and he must be enjoying the fitness level shown by these two because they really up and down it, hammer and tongs from the very first bell. Very much so. As I said, the... Uh, oh. Good shot there from Avery, the first real... Good shot from from range, and uh, that certainly uh, caught uh, uh, Elliot Watts uh, on the back foot, and uh, certainly stunned him for a while there. A little bit of confusion there. I think Elliot thought there was a command coming from the referee, <laughs> yeah. but got caught when his head went in the air. When you're watching this back, Elliot, just watch for that switch off when you come out, my friend. Yeah, you've mentioned it several times, Craig, and it's not a lesson he's learned so far, and that could be. The, actually what swings the fight because uh, there have been the best shots have been landed by Avery when when Watts has been stepping back very much so you caught on the account it, it's one of those things whatever you do a task in life once you've done that task you want to step back and look at what you've done mm. but you can't do that in boxing because the guy will jump on you and he'll catch you and that's just what's happened there but there was some useful work from uh, Elliot Watts on the inside there, Rich. He certainly had his moments in the fight, Watts, and it, it may, be, may be not clear-cut with the, the judges. The rounds have been close, and Elliot Watts has certainly had his moments, and uh, it's, been a, it's been action all the way. I mean, what you know, as I say, the fitness levels of these guys is absolutely fan fantastic, and they're giving some great entertainment. Right, And Watts now is having his best moments of the fight, absolutely uh, coming good in the closing stages, which uh, can often catch the judges' eye, Craig. Oh, fantastic. Massive effort there from Elliot. Massive effort. And uh, Kai Avery's coming out, get a little bit messy now when fatigue sets in. Uh, skill level goes out the window, as it should, when there's so much to play for. But it's a great, great effort to finish off here, Rich.
terrific all-action contest. Great credit to, to both boxers. They've given some superb entertainment to the uh, diners here at the Bristol Sporting Club uh, tonight. And we've, uh, if, if the first two fights are anything to go by, we're in for a cracking evening, that's for sure. Both still right in each other's faces up to the uh, final few seconds. And uh, Watts has done some eye-catching work in this, in this round, but it may not quite be enough. We'll have to wait and see. Again, Watts, Watts getting in some good punches in close range. It's probably been Watts' most effective round, Craig, but will it be enough? That's right, it's a superb effort, and we're looking again at, uh, at scoring blows. And there's an awful lot on the inside that either can't be seen or isn't effective. So uh, I still think at this stage, despite the gargantuan effort from Elliot, it's still Kai Avery for me. Last 10 seconds of this uh, wonderful second bout of the evening, all action from start to finish and uh, nobody deserves to lose really and uh, fantastic effort from both boxers and the great thing is as always great sportsmanship shown at the end of the bout. That was fantastic wasn't it and such an appreciative audience as it always is here at Bristol Sporting Club. The guys really do know their boxing and uh, that was a fantastic contest. So we await the uh, judges' verdict. It's uh, not one I, th I predict with any great confidence, Craig. Um, I, I agree with you that maybe Avery did better in the first two rounds and maybe that might be enough. But uh, good eye-catching uh, performance by <laughs> Elliot Watts in the uh, third round uh, by the Yeovil boxer. And uh, so applause for both because uh, th these people, as you say, know their boxing and uh, that was uh, a terrific bout, terrific bout to watch. The result of bout number two and the winner of the bout the unanimous decision to watch in the red corner. Well, there we are. The, maybe it was the last round that did it. So I wouldn't predict with any confidence. Uh, we had Avery just ahead, certainly on the first two rounds. But Watts did some good work at the end. But your uh, eyebrows went up at that, at that uh, decision. That's right. I'm delighted for Elliot Watts. I really am. Because that obviously was the last rally that did it. But uh, as I say, I think that will be a great, great one to have again just as soon as possible. Well done to both guys. Your attention please, this is a big bargain right here, big, big bargain. Listen carefully. So everyone wonders, the book, 25 pounds, if you come and see... Between the red corners and the holders of the Republican Party, Harry Edwards. And the blue corner representing the Davis Street Bristol Boxing Club, Amino Davis. Davis in the blue, Edwards in the red. Three, three minute rounds. So as we've already seen, these uh, championship belts are keenly, keenly contested. And uh, Harry Edwards from Devizes, boxing out of the red corner, is looking to retain that trophy if he possibly can, or that belt if he possibly can against Amali Davis from Baker Street ABC, Craig Turner alongside me, uh, again we've got higher hopes for this one I think. That's right, uh, young Harry Edwards, <coughs> who's grandson of uh, our supervisor this evening, Terry Smith, and he's, I think this might be his third defence of this belt. Uh, against young Amali Davis, who's 18 years of age. He works in retail, and I know he is something of a talent. He's uh, very tidy, both guys very technically tidy, as we can see. And uh, I think this will be something of a, a chest with muscles match. <laughs> OK, well, it's interesting to see how it will turn out. There's some good, solid blows landed there by Amali Davis. Both in the orthodox stance, right hand from Davis over the shoulder and misses. Both trying to get the range. Edwards just on the retreat there, making his opponent miss. Again, falling short, and a good left hand to the chin from Davis against the champion and he's encouraged by that and going forward just gets a little tied up on the inside clearly fast hands from Davis and uh, <laughs> Ken Brain tells him off for a little bit of showboating what he considered to be with that hands down by his knees almost 
and uh, maybe just a little bit of uh, first round cockiness there Craig I think it's a little bit of kidology the thing is the kids see the professionals do it and they think that's the way to do it as well and he still won't relent he's still at it Mr Brain won't have any of that no. but, uh, but he, he looks like he's, he's a bit of a character this Davis doesn't he Oh, he is hilarious. He's an entertainer. There's no choice about it. Great value for money. But a very skillful, capable boxer, as is Harry Edwards. Um, with Harry previously, still very much a youngster, still very much inexperienced, but a great boxer. You know it, I know it. Sometimes Harry doesn't, <laughs> and that's the problem. Well, he's got slight leakage of blood from the nose at the moment, but uh, Amali Davis dancing around, up on his toes. Super movement. And the hands are pretty swift as well. Right hand over the top there. Again causes some damage and the crimson flood continues. The jab causing more damage again. Certainly Davis has had some success in this round and throwing probably uh, twice as many punches as his opponent at the moment. And the jab getting through and throwing that, that right hand as well very effectively indeed. The boy from the Baker Street ABC. So Harry Edwards defending his belt, he's got a lot to think about after that first round. That's right, it's just a little bit stale I fancy when he, when he came into the ring. It's been a little while. Um, Cal welfare and protection of the boxer in Paramount, Dr. Sadine. Just having a little look at the nose there in the corner. In the corner there is Dad Alec, very capable boxer himself. And uh, over in the Baker Street corner, they'll be telling Amali Davis to get me on the jabs, long levers, settle down, go to work. Uh, unfortunately, Harry's got one of those noses. He only has to blow his nose and it starts to bleed. Um, but that's just as well he's such a good defensive boxer. Um, because you can see the skill level is very high with him. But there is a certain amount of sting in those uh, jabs from Davis, particularly, aren't there? He, you know, he, he, there's a, a certain power in his in his shots, even though he's quite a rangy lad. As you can see, he's very powerful, very lean. Uh, got a boxer's build, and uh, pretty much all the kids from that that gym, Baker Street, up in uh, up in Gloucester, led by Nigel Purcell and the team. Uh, they're very successful at building these uh, almost tailor-made boxers, yeah. lean athletes, but superbly strong. And uh, once again, Mr. Brain saying, cut it out, no showbiz, please. And uh, back we go again with some excellent defensive work. Yeah, well, for the uh, blood from the nose seems to have uh, stopped for the moment anyway, so Edwards can get back to the serious defence of defending his, his championship belt. Doing better in this uh, early stages of this second round. It's still that dangerous jab from Davis flashing out, but Edwards boxing a little bit more conservatively now, and maybe the defence just a little bit tighter as well. It's a good right hand from Davis once more. Both boxers a little more watchful in this round, but still that's a punishing jab from Davis and Edwards struggling to counter it at the moment. Getting picked off as he tries to come in and land some shots of his own. But it's the uh, swiftness to the punch which is giving Davis the edge in my eyes just at the moment. Edwards though working hard there. He's got to get inside a little bit more, I think, and try and nullify the uh, perhaps longer reach of, of Davis and try and work inside a bit more, Craig, because he's very, he's very open to that jab, isn't he? We need fast explosive attacks. Try and unsettle him, Ali Davis. Box, 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 go, then go again. Yeah. And uh, just try and set the trap, bring him in, counter and away. Because if you stand there in front of Ali Davis, you get the impression you're going to get hit hard. Yeah. So uh, better box in there from Harry Edwards. As you can see, he's got fast hands, he's very capable, but the strength of Davis is proving a little bit tough at the moment. Yeah, it certainly is. So Edwards with a mountain to climb at the moment, still blood coming through his nose once more. Just shows the number of times. 
Davis has connected with the jab and sometimes with the, the backhand as well. Just faints and then throws the right hand. But Edwards in a quandary because he knows he's got to land shots himself. He can't just spend the contest avoiding the fast hands of his opponent. But uh, game effort and acknowledgement of that from, uh, from Edwards to his opponent. And uh, you fancy the devices corner has got to come up with a plan, Craig. That's right. I think that the, the phases of attack, to go, go again, then back on your bike, let him come, and then go back at him straight away after the attack. If you look at Amali Davis, he tends to fall in should he miss. Such is his strength. He throws himself over the front foot. So it could be that he's open to a counter there. Just a push away on the front foot and come back counter. You know, that, that's... Uh, everything to play for there easier said than done from out here Nigel yeah. but um, <laughs> especially when you, you're being hit hard and fast uh, but again two immensely talented kids well I think the superior strength at the moment is just winning it there for Amali Davis yeah he clearly wants it as does uh, Edwards want to retain the the belt here we go the final round then third round of three in this uh, championship contest, Amali Davis in the uh, the grey singlet, and Edwards all in white. I was going to say, except it's uh, tinged with red from the uh, the nosebleed. But there's some good work by the champion. He's got a boxer move. Get some of those combinations in. Try and. Rock Davis out of his stride if he can. And once he's on the inside, he's got to land. But in, instead gets forced back into that corner. And Davis landing plenty. Good two or three punches landed by Edwards, though, there as he turned away from the corner. Ken Brain keeping a close eye on the, the damage there. And uh, Davis shakes his head as if to say, no, that didn't, that didn't connect. Just probably clipped on the tip of the chin. Edwards uh, just looking a little weary. Good left hand from Edwards, but it's caught himself on the inside. Marley Davis just breathing a little bit deeper now as well. Both feeling the pace just a little bit. High tempo all the way through so far. Again, they're just holding on a little bit. They're both uh, trying to get as much rest as they can in a frantic contest. The blood still gushing out of uh, Edward's nose, but he's gamely carrying on and putting up a great defence of his, uh, his belt, albeit at this stage you fear for him that it's going to be a forlorn attempt because uh, Davis has looked very accomplished indeed and he's still standing off there and throwing that right hand. He's guard right down by his knees again but throws another stinging right hand and uh, he's just picking him off as he comes in Craig. That's right 3-3 three, three is being reasonably new to these guys night and uh, it tells right in these uh, later stages of the round you can see his wonderful movement uh, Harry Edwards he, he can make you miss and make you pay but the, the unrelenting attacks from Ali Davis is so so strong and unfortunately that's what's paid off tonight for Harry Edwards. Yeah, you can only make him miss so many times, can't you, with the amount of punches he's been throwing. And there we are, there's the, uh, the bell to end it. Great respect between the two of them. And I think we know the way this one's going to go, Craig. Very much so. Harry Edwards, such a talented, gifted kid. But when I say kid, I don't mean that disrespectfully, I mean it truthfully. He's still got to grow into his adult strength at the moment. And Ali Davis already has it. Pivotal years in terms of development. And uh, by no means uh, any disgrace, third defence of the title, 
and uh, it'll all come again, young man, definitely. Yeah, very impressive from both boxers. Let's wait for the official result. Thank you, gentlemen. The result number three is a split decision in favour of Davis yeah. in the blue corner. And he wins the white, 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 white So this is Richard Latham and uh, Craig Turner with you for the fourth bout of this very exciting Bristol Sporting Club uh, card tonight. It's for the welterweight challenge belt of the Western Counties and we have in the red corner Ben Waters of the Salisbury uh, Boxing Club and he's taken on Jordan Wilson uh, of the Parkstone Club uh, and uh, Craig, uh, the holder is uh, Waters, is he favourite? At this stage of the game, it's sort of difficult to say. Um, I've not seen too much of Jordan, but I do know the Parkstone Club down in Bournemouth produce a very good standard of boxer. South Pole there, Jordan Wilson, Ben Walters at the Salisbury ABC. And uh, as you can see, good standard, Rich, lots of head movement there from the Salisbury man. Uh, great shot, great left from the, the uh, Salisbury boxer there as well. Uh, ben Waters making a good start to this defence of the belt. He's certainly looking the business in these opening stages is uh, Ben Waters uh, from uh, Salisbury and uh, he's all struck with another good left there and he's got his opponent in some trouble early on and uh, at the moment this looks like it might not last too long, Greg. Could well be, but the South Pole weathers the storm. Uh, Stock answer there, slipping the soft pull, south pull jab. Ben Walters coming back with the right hand left hook. And uh, Jordan just there for that. Watch the left hook. That could be quite dramatic, I fancy. That looks the punch that could uh, decide this fight, certainly in the early stages. He's got in a couple of, of really decent left hooks as uh, Ben Waters. And uh, although he's taken one on the, uh, in return there from uh, Jordan Wilson, who's certainly not going to go down without a fight, but he's taken uh, two or three le hefty blows already in these uh, opening stages. Jordan Wilson in the black uh, vest and uh, the holder of this belt, Ben Waters, so far uh, looking very impressive uh, in defending it. And uh, another, another big attack, another big attack from Ben Waters. And uh, he's certainly trying to uh, intimidate his opponent in this early round and, and uh, early part of the fight. And uh, another left hook there. And uh, really, Jordan Wilson's got to start avoiding these, Greg, or he's, he's going to be taken out. That's right. He needs to keep the front hand high, uh, keep the feet moving. In a way, at this stage, let his head clear. Not the best start, but it's nothing that can't be put right, providing that he makes this guy miss. And uh, believe you me, Rich, if I was in there, that's what I'd be doing, trying to make him miss. <laughs> so, uh, He's just another very solid left again from Bed Waters there, and it's that left hand that's really dominating this fight. Another one there. He's, he's uh, really used his left to, uh, to good advantage in this uh, opening round. And uh, just changing there and getting a, a right in, leading with his right. But uh, as I say, the, the left has been the dominant punch, certainly, of Ben Waters in this uh, opening round. There it comes again, and Jordan Waters, every time he clears his head, he's catching another one, isn't he? And uh, that was a very, very impressive opening round for Ben Waters. As the adrenaline settling down, Rich, you could see at the end of that round that uh, Jordan Wilson just started to throw a very interesting looking straight left hand. And uh, just clipping there, it wasn't exactly clean, but it was there. So tactically and technically, things might be settling down. His head will clear during this round. We may see something different in this uh, 
this next round. Well, it really comes down to if he can avoid that water's left, then uh, you'd think he can come into the come into the contest. But if he doesn't, then there's one with his number, his name on. Well, that's right. I mean, this <laughs> famous guy said everyone's got a plan until they get hit. Uh, but just at the moment, you know, you, you can't be wholly reliant on on power. You know, you've got to have a plan and. Uh, Certainly the Salisbury corner executed one superbly there against the South Pole. But as I say, now the adrenaline is, uh, is subsided and uh, the lads are, had some great coaching there because both guys are very, very well schooled. Uh, we may see something a little bit different. Round two then in this uh, battle for the uh, challenge belt in the 64 to 69 kilos category. Ben Waters, the holder. Again, starting with some good left hands and good work in this uh, second round. And Jordan Wilson, who certainly can take a punch, that's for sure, uh, looking to uh, get back into it. Uh, again, just beaten to the punch, though, and, and that's been the case for a lot of the first round. Uh, Jordan uh, Wilson with a bit to do uh, to get himself back into the contest. But uh, to say, he's taken the punches that have been thrown at him, uh, Craig, and taken them well. Tough, tough, tough kid. They generally are down there in Parkstone. And uh, won't go quietly, that's for sure. He's taking some rockets. <laughs> But uh, back he comes again. Just a gum shield out there. I think. Yeah, I think the gum shield's just uh, it's just given it to, for, to the water's corner to be, to be uh, put back in. Uh, so a little bit of a respite in another really action-packed contest. And we've had that all the way uh, tonight on what is turning out to be a really good Bristol Sporting Club show. A little bit wild, you know, from uh, Ben Waters. You just think maybe, Craig, if he was just a little bit more controlled, that maybe he could, he could take his man out. Again, relatively relative novices. Um, I think with experience, uh, you get your composure, Rich. You know, you can settle back, pick your shots a little bit more. But uh, with the newness and keenness of of novice boxers, they, they continue to think they're behind, even if they're not. <laughs> but uh, certainly at this stage, I would submit that Ben Walters is. Uh, quite a good way in front yeah. and as I say Jordan won't go quietly good body shot from him there yeah that was a good body shot probably his best punch of the fight so far uh, uh, Jordan Wilson and uh, he's not out of this by any means yet but uh, and he's not taken quite as much in this uh, second round as he took in the first he's uh, he's uh, more in, more in, uh, involved himself and getting some good, good shots. there's another very good combination from Waters and uh, that uh, that uh, certainly shook uh, the uh, Parkstone boxer Somebody's shouting, keep it tidy to uh, Ben Waters, and that's probably the good advice, isn't it? He's just a little bit ragged at times. That's right, and I've noticed that uh, he does come rushing in there. If Jordan Wilson drops his head to the back foot through the left hand, things could get interesting. That's if you've got the presence of mind and the experience to, to look at that. Yeah, that's, and that's more or less what he was trying to do there, and it's, uh, it's a more even round, this second one, and uh, Jordan Wilson will take some heart from that. And again, though, he's, he's walked on to one there as Jordan Wilson, but uh, again, he's taken the punch well, keeps coming forward, and not out of it by any means. Good exchange there, and again, Waters getting, uh, uh, landing probably the best punch of that exchange. But, uh, fair play to uh, Jordan Wilson, he's, he's still coming forward, and he's still trying to get in good shots of his own. Well, that was a more interesting round, I thought, than the first, and that it was closer. What did you think there, Craig? Very much so, and they see there's some nice stuff there coming from uh, from uh, Jordan Wilson. As I said to you, Rich, he's trying to drop to the back foot, let uh, Ben Walters overcommit, and throw the left hand as he comes. And he's had some success with that. It's a more complicated um, counter punch, but uh, as you can see, the fatigue setting in now. Yeah. Two relatively um, new kids, 12 bounce I got for Jordan Wilson. So really just scratch the surface, but early indications excellent because both guys have got the ability to be technical. It will be interesting as, as tiredness sets in in this third round because Waters at times has looked a bit open to me as he's, as he's come in. Uh, though he's landed some really good shots, uh, defensively he may not be uh, uh, quite as good as he is, is with his attack. And uh, as you say, there might be an opening there for Jordan Wilson if, if he's got the presence of mind to find it. Very much so. It's all down to composure at this level and certainly fitness in the third round of a three round three minute contest uh, this is where things get tough here we go then round three 
and uh, it's been action again all the way and it's been that all the way from the start of the show tonight here at the Bristol Sporting Club some excellent contests all closely contested and after a really good first round uh, Ben Waters the holder of this particular belt is uh, finding it a little bit uh, tougher as time goes on against Jordan Wilson but another good shot again there uh, as uh, Wilson came in and uh, just when it seems Wilson's doing a little bit better Waters does land a, a, a good shot well, again Walters co uh, Wilson coming forward and uh, certainly brave as a lion and uh, he's going he's to give it everything in this uh, third round to try and turn this contest round I think he has got to turn it round don't you Craig? Very much so indeed all to do here for uh Jordan Wilson fancies he's a bit handy at the body shots Jordan Wilson and uh, that could tell couldn't it as the, as the closing stages very much indeed and uh, on the gum shield out again for um, uh, Ben Waters that's the second time in the contest uh, it's happened and again it's a little lull in the action and uh, probably both boxes look, looking for a little bit of a breather <laughs> at uh, this stage because we're, we're deep into this contest now and uh, Again, the fitness levels have been absolutely fantastic, and they're. Uh, I, I think Wilson's done better as the as the as the uh, bouts progressed, but uh, every so often he just walks onto one of those uh, big shots from uh, uh, Ben Waters, and uh, that's probably just keeping Waters in front. Another good shot as as uh, Wilson came in there. Um, he's walked onto one or two. But uh, my word, he's shown some courage because he did get clipped in that first round uh, with three, I would say, really good left hooks. Could be that uh, Wilson may be finishing the stronger because he's, uh, he's still walking onto it. And again, wonderful fitness levels and, and bravery from both, uh, both boxers. But uh, uh, again, just possibly uh, Waters landing the, the uh, cleaner blows. Yeah, again, another immense effort. Great right hand there from uh, Ben Walters. Interesting point you made, though, Rich, that uh, Jordan Wilson got better as the contest has gone on. Uh, the adrenaline goes, the strength goes, your fitness goes, and you've got to fall back to technical and tactical work. And I think that's probably where we've seen the best of him technically, um, because he's up against it. Uh, so ultimately, We've got another hole in the fight now. Is, is, is that another gum shield come out it is it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, becoming a bit of a uh, action replay this uh, with the gum shield again having to be replaced uh, for uh, for Ben Waters and, and yeah that's uh, a points warning it's came out three times referee brain given a warning uh, they have to bite down on the gum shield it's a safety thing rich obviously well, that uh, may uh, just to give Wilson heart because uh, he's definitely come back into the fight again, though caught by an excellent shot there from uh, from Ben Waters. And as I say, every time Wilson threatens to come back into the fight, he, he seems to walk onto one, and uh, Waters just retains control. But another another good shot there as well. Um, from, certainly from range, uh, Waters has, has, has landed the better punches. Last 10 seconds of this wonderful contest again, and another thriller here at the uh, Bristol Sporting Club. And Waters looking to finish strongly, but also uh, Jordan Wilson. Great credit to him. And after a first round that looked like uh, uh, Waters might uh, dominate with his left, uh, Jordan Wilson's put up a great contest there and uh, goes to the judges. That was fantastic. I fancy if we had another two or three rounds. Uh, well, I don't think the other guys, the guys would fancy another two or three <laughs> rounds. But as the adrenaline settles down, we had a better contest, didn't we? Ladies and gentlemen, result of fact number four is a unanimous decision to Waters in the red corner. He retains the belt. Can you please charge your glasses and be understanding? Let's get you two going over there. That's it. Got arms up. Gentlemen, I'll give you the queen. The queen. The queen. Between the red corner representing the Glassman and the Sports Club, Darren Jackson. And the blue corner representing Torbay and the Sports Club, Ben Andrews. Andrews Blue, Jackson Red, three, three minute rounds. Only four bucks to go. Four bucks to go.
So here we go then with our next contest. Darren Jackson against Ben Andrews. The latest of our championship uh, belts being contested here at uh, the Bristol Hotel on this Bristol Sporting Club show. Uh, Craig Turner alongside me. Craig, uh, tell us a bit about these two boys, please. Well, we have Darren Jackson, a newcomer to amateur boxing, 39 years of age. He can box uh, up to your 40 these days. But in terms of his fitness and ability, he's a much younger man. <laughs> and uh, it's a seven contest. And we've got Ben Andrews from Torbay, he's a general builder, the bigger of the two men in the blue. Darren Boxing from South Pole Stance. And both guys going right for it from the work of one, just a little bit south of the border there. So uh, Darren Jackson is quite literally not a spring chicken, but he's he's boxing like one. Immensely fit and a uh, very, very hard man. Uh, I've seen him on more than one occasion and enjoyed his performances. And uh, But it doesn't really matter what age you come into the sport, you're still a relative novice. And uh, that's what these belts are there for. And the guys very much enjoy competing for them. Yeah, it must take a... A lot of guts to get in with all these younger guys, and uh, he's got a battle on his hands here against uh, Ben Andrews. Um, more gum shield problems as to were in the previous bout. Jackson in the, uh, the white vest. And uh, left himself a little open to a right hand from Ben Andrews there as he's on his way in. Darren's dropped his uh, rear hand there, so I think there's something wrong with his arm. He's in significant pain there. I'm not sure what it is, but he's carrying... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's waving his left arm, he's twisting it. It's muscular, whatever, or whether his shoulder's gone in and out or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, you're quite right. There's no, definitely there's a problem there, isn't there? There's a bulge in the bison. I think it could be a torn bicep. Right. Yeah. So that, if not leaving him defenseless, certainly leaves him at a considerable disadvantage. Yeah, it's torn. It's quite a bad one as well, unfortunately. And this being the first round, you would think, uh, does he really want to continue with that? What would you advise him, Craig? No, I'd, I'd be stopping that. Yeah. yeah. And he's great, looking great to his shame. corner, isn't he, also looking for advice, but maybe they'll get him to the end of the round and then make a decision. Yeah, it's just a sad injury. But uh, unfortunately, it's the rear hand, so that means the orthodox right hand be coming straight over the top of it. Yeah. What a great shame for Darren. And there's the 10 seconds till the end of the round, but... One fears that uh, this will be the end of the contest if his corner has a has a look. Um, you never know, though. He might want to he might want to carry on, but you can be too brave in boxing sometimes, Craig, can't you? Well, too brave for their own good. And unfortunately, that's when the good coach has to step in and say, "Well, that's enough." But it's only Sean Holmes knows his boxer that well. Yeah, and uh, exceptionally good coach, Sean. So uh, and then the other corner, Darren Aspen. But uh, Darren knows his own body as well. He doesn't look happy at all with that. Equally, there's pride, isn't there? You don't necessarily want to quit on the stall. But they're having a little bit of Ken Brain here, and I think this could be uh, could be decisive. I think I think that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what a shame, but uh, it looks like he's, uh, indeed that is what's happened, Darren Jackson having to retire on his stall, he's got a torn bicep, some problem with his bicep and uh, very unlucky there to end the contest in that way. Yeah, deeply upset in there for Darren and, and you know, very, very unlucky, um, but again, futile to continue, the injury is going to get worse and uh, unfortunately he boxed orthodox as well, his rear hand was pivotal in blocking the power hand yeah so uh 
great, great shame. So there we are. Um, we'll take the formal decision in just a moment, but uh, the uh, belt winner for tonight anyway, Ben Andrews from Torbay. Ladies and gentlemen, you saw this boat, the referee stops the contest with an injury. The winner is Andrews in the blue corner. So heavyweight contest here and uh, it always helps in identifying the boxers when they have their name across their waistband. So I think we know who Rolf is, uh, Craig, but tell me about both the, what you know about both these boys. Well, for a start, they're exceptionally big, aren't they? <laughs> 91, uh, 81, 91. Heavyweights, Mark Cooper from the red corner of the newly formed Blue Flames Amateur Boxing Club in Taunton. And uh, we've got uh, Jake Rolf of Parkstone down in uh, Bournemouth and Jake Rolf, 23 years of age only two contests, relative beginner but uh, quite tidy night yeah and uh, <coughs> Southport at the moment at Southport, least yeah to start to start with and uh, the heavyweights as ever we always say you just got to keep your eye on it because uh, one punch can uh, change the course of a, a contest can't it very much so and of course Mark Cooper uh, from Blue Flames. Mark's 28 years of age. He has 10 bouts. Bricklayer by trade. And I can imagine he can shift a few as well from day to day. <laughs> yeah. So at the moment they're just uh, having a look, seeing what the opposition is going to provide. And Cooper, slightly the taller of the two. Certainly a uh, straighter stance anyway, stood straight up. Ralph sli sli slightly crouched and looking to get that backhand into action. Throws out the, the right jab and then there is that left hand that comes in over the top, just clips the side of Cooper's head. It's a dangerous weapon with the, the southpaw but certainly getting pushed back onto the ropes there as they try and unload. You can tell that uh, both are just a little bit wary until they've sussed out the opponent properly. And, and already that uh, left hand from Rolf looks like it could be a potent re weapon if he uh, s sends it off in the right fashion. Yeah, you got the impression, as uh, my old friend Tony Stanner would say, this kid's got sleep in both hands. <laughs> he's, uh, he's got a fair dig on him. And there's some good advice from the Parkstone corner there. Don't load up yeah. too much. And he can hit, switch the attack from head and body. Mark Cooper not looking especially happy at the moment, but he needs to get behind his longer arms, and he's gone. And there we are. There was the left hand, as we were talking about. Three, four, five, six, Taking plenty of time seven, to eight. make sure he makes the count. Sat on the seat of his pants quite literally. Ken Brain just having a look. He's okay to continue. Some wag in the table to my right said he slipped, but he slipped thanks to the punch in the face. And there's a welcome sound for Cooper. It's the uh, 10 seconds to the end of the round, and there is the bell to end it. So uh, if he was going to get floored, that was a good time for it to happen advantageous that one but he did the right thing he grabbed hold had the presence of mind mind to tie his man up and uh, 
Yeah, Jake, Rolf, traumatic stuff there. Um, the guys, Rob Scott, very experienced coach in the corner there and his team. Just be advising Mark to get behind the jab, use his superior reach and uh, boxing skills just to try and thwart the attacks of Jake Rolf. Because he's, he's throws some very awkward stuff as well for the South Boys. What we call it down there, loop and scoop. Loop <laughs> over the top, scoop underneath. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they're coming from all different angles. But he does everything wrong right. Yeah. So, uh, well, just the way his, his stance, it, it, it almost looks like. He's going to hit you with a left, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It absolutely. really does. Always telegraphs it, but it doesn't necessarily come the angle you're expecting. Well, the worst thing for a boxer is him telling you he's going to hit you with a left, and then does. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> so here we go again. What can Mark Cooper do now? He, he knows what he's facing. Had time to get over the uh, the knockdown. Inevitably going to be a bit more wary, but he's going into the attack himself and getting a good two, three, four punches off there. Ralph's got to do the work again, of course. And he's looking to land the left hand again. And there we are, Ken Brains decided he's seen enough. A roar of excitement from the Parkston supporters away to our left and so uh, in the early stages of round number two Jack Rolfe is the winner as Ken Brain says enough is enough so uh, you never know what to expect with the heavyweights Craig. Cal Ruff own protection of the boxer always pound out better too soon than too late Kenny Brain was the exemplary boxer knows what it's like to take a punch you won't subject anybody else to that when it's not necessary um, Kids aren't on any doubt, nothing to be proved. Probably do it all over again next next week. So uh, mm -hmm. fair play to Ken Brain. It's a, it's a brave decision, a brave effort, but it's the right one. And Mark Cooper's smiling, so that probably says it all. So uh, Ken Brain explaining his decision, and we'll just get the uh, official result now. In sort of this boat, the referee stops the contest in favour of Ralph in the blue corner. And the winner of the heavyweight belt. So it's Western Counties against the RAF again in our uh, next bout. Uh, Richard Latham here with uh, Craig Turner. And we have uh, for the Western Counties Ashley Duffus from the uh, Kings Boxing Club at Cheltenham. And he's up against Alex Leslie in the blue corner from the RAF, a middleweight contest. And if it's anything like the entertainment we've had so far this evening, uh, we're in for another treat. So a little delay before the start, Craig, so tell us what you know about these two. Those two guys here, this is Corporal Alex Leslie, 26 years of age, and uh, Ashley Duffus of the King's Boxing Club in Cheltenham, and uh, he's 18 years of age. And I uh, saw Ashley just recently, he was a stoppage winner in uh, championships, very capable guy, and here we go. Yes, just a slight delay while we waited for a doctor to return to the uh, room, and uh, an another fearsome start we've had some ferocious action tonight and both or both these boxers are already going at it hammer and tongs alex leslie very much on the front foot in the uh, early stages uh, the blue corner and the blue strip from the raf and he really has come out uh, with all guns blazing craig <laughs> that's right uh, you can see it's very much a boy and with a man so ashley's gonna have to use his considerable boxing skill which he does 
to try and thwart the strong attacks of Alex Leslie. Of course, our servicemen, it's their job to be fit. Rich, so uh, he's going to be exceptionally fit. Yes, he's got certainly got the reach, uh, has uh, Ashley Duffus. And, uh, but he's just been put under terrific early pressure by a non-stop onslaught from uh, Alex Leslie and uh, he's going to need all his boxing ability here because uh, this is this is a, an RAF opponent who's uh, on the front foot from the start. Good stuff from Duffus, a good combination and uh, you'd really need to see him using his reach here, Craig. He's got a considerable reach advantage. Very, much. very, very clever guy and very quick as well. And uh, he can't hold his feet. He must go off at the angles, not hold his feet, doesn't want to be there. Because this guy really wants to uh, work on the inside, short to mid-range. Yeah, fascinating contrast of styles here because you can see that Duffus would prefer to keep it at distance. And Leslie is certainly not had no intention of letting him do that. Uh, but he's been caught coming in a couple of times uh, by some good shots from Duffus. And uh, it's an interesting uh, contrast in styles, this one. As you can see, the technical ability uh, definitely comes from Ashley Duffus versus strength and maturity from uh, Corporal Leslie. A really interesting first round. Leslie right on the front foot from the opening bell, but uh, Ashley Duffus just growing into it and uh, producing some good combinations of his own uh, as the uh, round went on. And he, he looks quite a stylish fighter, doesn't he? He's a talent, Rich, uh, and a young talent, which is good for Western Counties boxing. Uses his height and reach well good pair of feet on him, uses different angles and uh, relative beginner, not had too many contests at the moment but early indications certainly on the talent pathway are excellent for him. Possibly still growing as well at that, that age, I mean he could get even taller and uh, he's, he's, he's certainly looks the part but he's, uh, he's got to be, his defending defence has got to be good tonight because uh, that, that was a ferocious onslaught early on but I wonder how much energy uh, you know Alex Leslie's used up at there because he, he really went uh, went at it like a bull didn't he in the first uh, first certainly first half of that round absolutely and when you're hitting elbows and gloves in thin air that's very very wearing but one or two got through there and it's equally as wearing on Ashley so uh, the youngster yeah he's got to keep boxing he's got to thwart this is the bull in the matador so a really good test here for a young Ashley Duffus and a good, good, excellent combinations there. And uh, he certainly, uh, he can unleash them uh, very uh, at speed, as can Ashley Duffus, and uh, very impressive uh, couple of combinations there from him. Back comes Leslie with a good uh, right of his own. And uh, this is a really fascinating contest. Leslie trying to get past that long reach of, uh, of Duffus, and when he does, he, he lets rip inside, but again, a good left there from uh, Duffus, and uh, there's a good deal of style about this boy. I really like the uh, look of him, and uh, for a novice, Greg, this is an impressive start. Very much so. He's very, his hand speed is excellent, and he's very, very clever. You can see a little walk around there, and another little look, look for the opening, and there it is. Shot selection's absolutely superb. He's overcome the uh, real storming start made by Alex Leslie, but now another good attack by the RAF uh, boxer. And he's got through there with a couple, and uh, Leslie uh, Duffus is holding on. Uh, and that, uh, that certainly uh, hurt him, that uh, combination from uh, Leslie. But again, Ashley Duffus boxing on the back foot, but sticking out that, uh, that left hand and following it up with really good hand speed, as you say. And that, uh, that's the impressive part of his performance so far. Uh, Leslie won't be denied. He keeps coming in, but he's catching some on the way in. And uh, not an easy fight to call this one at the moment. And a good shot there from Leslie as uh, Duffus just left his chin out as he was backing away. Uh, but uh, all action from Leslie. But Duffus, as I say, looking really stylish and uh, handling his opponent really well. I think for a, for a young boxer, it's just fantastic. And you know, being 18, he's he's only just started to box as a as an elite, as a senior, and uh, just holding his own with a superbly fit, mature man and uh, just starting to fade a little bit now a good shot right uppercut as he came in great absolutely cracking shot there at the end of that round from uh, duffus and he's produced some real quality uh, boxing in this uh, bout but uh, you have to feel that leslie may have the superior fitness possibly being in the raf and it might tell in the third round we shall have to wait and see but whatever happens from here on uh, uh, the first minute or so was all leslie and uh, duffus has done well to come through that and uh, and produce some really good boxing of his own so uh, something to build on here craig whatever the outcome 
Very much so. I mean, I, the, the way that he dropped his weight to his back foot and brought his opponent into the right uppercut there is an immensely difficult shot. But to have that composure and have that sight so early in his career is just unbelievable. And I'm going to say, uh, definitely, Ashley Duffus, don't sign anything yet because we want you on the Western <laughs> County squad. <laughs> He's breathing heavily in the red corner just in front of us is Ashley Duffus, but uh, I'm not surprised because he's been put under a lot of pressure by this uh, terrier-like uh, RAF boxer, Alex Leslie, who's certainly been in his face at every opportunity, but has uh, taken a bit uh, on the way in on occasions and uh, hasn't stopped Ashley Duffus looking uh, stylish, look, uh, showing great hand speed and looking a great prospect for the future. So we're coming up for the third and final round and uh, really I think it still could go uh, either way this contest it'll be very interesting to see how fitness comes into it now uh, Craig won it in this uh, final third and final round very much so in terms of clean punch and there's three jabs there as the uh, the airman comes in we go again just a newness there he tends to be diving on his work a little bit he needs to use his feet go back to range you really don't want to be there Ashley keep it long yeah, so difficult to keep this opponent off him because he, he really is, uh, he's walks through punches to uh, Alex Leslie to get in those of his own. Another great uppercut there from uh, Ashley Duffers who's produced some real quality. For another one again, he's, he certainly favours the uppercut, Craig, and he's produced some crackers. It's just immense. It's such a natural shot for him. And uh, as you say, it's, it was a big ask for a, a youngster in with a... I think, you know, uh, uh, a fully grown man. I say man, you know, mature man. Yeah. And Good shots from Leslie just above us there as he came uh, towards us, and uh, Ashley Duffus had to take those, but he's shown he can take a punch as well. Uh, and uh, this is a tough examination for him, but he's coming through it pretty well. The airman's going to be in front of him all night long. And a gum shield out. We've seen a pattern of that this evening. Not yeah, absolutely, and uh, one or two of the bouts have been interrupted in this way, um, and again it gives the fighters, or the, the uh, boxers, just a breather, and Ashley Duff is leaning on the uh, ropes above us, and he certainly looks like he could do with that, and uh, this could be the toughest part of the, uh, the contest for uh, Ashley Duff, this last minute or so. Very much indeed, and uh, this guy's been hitting him hard, right the way through, and the uppercut again, and... Uh, uh, Corporal Leslie just hasn't quite found the answer to that shot as he threatens with it again. Yeah. Some very clean shots have come from Ashley Duffus in this fight. Some of them on the on the back foot as he's been moving away, but he's, he's caught his opponent. And it's a close one, this, I think. It, there's uh, great credit to both uh, boxers again. Uh, contrasting styles in this one, and uh, it's made for a fascinating bout. Leslie's trying to finish the strongest, trying to make his uh, fitness tell, but uh, Ashley Duffus uh, on the ropes and... Uh, He's, 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 he's been told to breathe deeply by his corner and this is the going into territory now that uh, Leslie will favour I think the uh, the final few uh, seconds of this fight uh, 10 seconds left in a wonderful contest and some great shots been uh, put in by both boxers again uh, terrifically entertaining contest and uh, probably the best of the night so far and there's been some good ones that was absolutely fabulous regardless of any decision at all Ashley Duffus what a talent for the future, Rich. Absolutely heartening to see that amount of ability and talent coming through our programme in the Western Counties. Yeah, I've really enjoyed watching him uh, this evening and uh, we'll be looking out for uh, future bouts involving Ashley Duffus because that was a real tough examination by a very, very fit RAF boxer. And uh, it may be that uh, fitness has just prevailed uh, for the RAF uh, boxer, but whatever happens, if, in, in, if it is in defeat or in victory, uh, Ashley Duffus comes out with enormous credit. Ladies and gentlemen, please hold the vote seven. It's a split decision in favour of Duffus in the red corner. Three, two, 
So the penultimate contest of uh, the evening it seems to have gone by quite quickly. We've seen some spectacular boxing, some, a couple of early finishes, and uh, who knows what's going to happen in this latest uh, bout in the match, the mini match between the RAF and the Western Counties. Billy Bridgman for the home side and Kenny Norman for the RAF. Uh, Craig as ever has all the stats on these two. Yeah, Billy Bridgman of the Wells Amateur Boxing Club. 21 years of age, eight contest, orthodox. Uh, we have senior air Chrisman, Kenny Norman, Royal Air Force, 25 years of age, nine bags, orthodox also. Both guys trying to get their long reach off. Some nice shot selection there from, uh, from Billy Bridgman. <clears throat> Bit of a barrage coming in, but the RAF man coming back. But uh, at the moment, it looks like Bridgman really wants to take it to Norman, and he's doing so pretty effectively in a flurry of punches, Craig. Very much so. He's very open for the jab. He uh, moves very well, does Billy Bridgman. <coughs> and uh, very well scored by Clyde Gadd and his crew up in Wells. And as you can see, he's first to the jab every single time, and there's very little opposition against it. No. <coughs> Norman's just basically on the back foot all the time, isn't he? Evasive action, not really getting the opportunity to throw his own shots because Bridgman is basically chasing him down across the ring, pinning him up against the ropes, and a little smile on Bridgman's face shows he's enjoying it. And as you say, uh, Norman seems quite open straight down the middle, Craig. That's right, the newness of the guys. As you say, kind of uh, nine bouts, eight bouts. <coughs> learn, learn pretty quickly. If you don't move your head, your opponent will do it for you. Yeah. And uh, that's what we've got at the moment. Very literal upper body movement, Nigel. But that's the newness. Yeah. That's the novice. And there are Bridgman's tagged him again with another right hand. And he's in a lot of trouble in that corner. Incessant pressure. And he'll be glad to hear the 10 second warning for the end of the round because... Bridgman right on top as the first round comes to a close and actually just landed one momentarily after the bell went but just took the initiative, realised that uh, his man was there and just pushed home the attack and that was really very effective first two minutes by uh, the home boxer. That's right Nigel, you see he's got his man uh, backing up so he kept him backing up. But again, interestingly with, with Billy, didn't try to get too close because he knew chances are that um, Kenny was going to tie him up if he got too close and nullified the attack. So he stood off at long range and uh, tried to pin his man yeah. rather than follow him in. And uh, that's intelligent, that's uh, presence of mind. So he seems to have quite a lot of ability for someone with such uh, a, a low level of experience. Yeah. Kenny Norman, though, he's got an interest in the natural defence in as much as almost like a, a Mayweather half cover, <laughs> shoulders high, and, you know, can be effective, uh, providing you use it occasionally and well. Yeah, well, Billy Bridgman will have been pleased with his first two minutes' work. Can he follow it up in this second round? It's bound to just slow down a fraction, you would think. And um, the RAF corner has probably given some wise instructions to their man as well. But the right hand of Bridgman getting through there. And remember the uh, previous round, the RAF man was surviving in the corner as the bell went. Well, he's back in that similar position now. And there's still a absolute barrage of punches coming from the Wells boxer. And he's back in that red corner again and taking a fair bit of a battering. Bridgman just not letting him get near the centre of the ring if he can, he's just following him around, going from corner to corner now. And Norman on the back foot all the time. All he can do really at the moment is defend. A very gallant effort, it must be said, but uh, he really hasn't got the time to react as left and right hands come in from Bridgman. Norman trying to fight back off that ropes, but he's still stuck in a corner and he, he does not need to be there. He needs to step away, turn a little bit and get back into the centre, but Bridgman just chases him back across the ring towards us and um, he, he really just can't get away from the ropes, Craig. Sorry, some damage to the uh, right eye there of uh, 
Billy Bridgman. That's uh, works on it close quarters, and it accidental. Good left hand. Good right hand following. Yeah. Just incessant pressure, isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh, the airman has got to move, otherwise it'll pump to protection count. Storm Again, ending round. this round just like he did in the uh, the first with Bridgman all over him, up against the ropes, and the bell ends the punishment just for now. Well, powerhouse performance from Billy Bridgman from Wells. Really, just the sheer volume of punches causing Kenny Norman from the RAF to just keep going backwards and seeking sanctuary by the ropes, but. Actually, it's anything but that. It's uh, it's almost like a prison, isn't it? Being back, trapped back there. Very much so. Instinct wants to tell you to back up as far as possible and get low. But essentially, the only way you can back up in a boxing ring will take you onto a straight line. So almost fight in nature instead of, of going back in a straight line. You know, you've got to go to the sides, but it won't occur to to lads of this little experience. So as a result, uh, the air, airmen's pinned into the corner and Billy Bridgman phenomenal work rate yeah um, well what's impressed me about him is that unlike you quite often see boxers have a bit of success and then they almost stand back and admire their work well he hasn't done any of that he's just piled on some more isn't yeah, he? yeah absolutely and uh, say Clive Glad to pay some attention to the damage on the which was face a good right hand over the jab they've got to be very careful that eye doesn't cut it's threatening to I believe so, uh, third round, and back the way it was, the same old story, and Bridgman just getting through at will, but fair play to Norman, he's throwing leather back, but in the end, under that tirade of pressure, I'm surprised, to be honest, he hasn't taken a knee before now, the, the amount of pressure he's been under, and he doesn't really look like in great condition to continue. No, I don't think your referee will be keen yeah he's looking very very unsteady at the moment final round remember but uh, Bridgman just seeing his opportunity steps in and pummeling his man quite literally and there we are he's gone down again and that will be it and uh, Bridgman with a welt coming up under his eye that's the only uh, downside for him in this contest but in the end pressure told and he was an emphatic winner that's right unlucky to the airman there he's as I say newness didn't quite know what to do to thwart the attack I think it's probably more fatigue than anything uh, with Kenny Norman but they're taking every precaution obviously the safety of the boxer uh, is paramount Dr David Sedin great servant to amateur boxing this part of the world just uh, Taking precautions there just to make sure he's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the result of that one great roughly stops the contest in favor of Brisbane in the red corner. So a couple of uh, familiar faces in the ring to conclude the evening's boxing here and uh, Craig Turner alongside me. Well obviously you know a lot about Ashley Banks, one of your down end boys. Lewis Scott we've seen here several times before. That's right, Lewis been around since he was a kid. I've known his dad for a long, long time as well, Rob. Head coach there at uh, Blue Flames and decent pro Dal Nixon in the corner uh, for Blue Flames tonight as well. You remember him, nice. Yeah, yeah. So we've got uh, Lewis Scott, 
his twin brother, he's 25 years of age. It's a 43 contest now. With Ash Banks, who's 20, 25 bouts. He's a medical engineer, he's just on placement in Bristol at the moment. He's uh, known to produce uh, surgical instruments, so a clever guy. So a real cut and thrust from him tonight, then. Oh, I like that noise, that was, <laughs> that was seamless, lovely. <laughs> So, so he scuffs the big lad, but uh, Ashley is putting in some uh, telling jabs. <laughs> Certainly, powerful figure is Scott. Ashley Banks moving neatly round the exterior of the ring and landing a decent little combination there, trying to get round the guard of Scott. He's got his gloves held up high. Right hand from Banks testing the defences. Scott rather launching himself with that left hand, but off balance. Scott working to the body. Lots of head movement from the Blue Flames boxer. So, Banks there with a right hand to the body, had a little bit of success. Scott, oh, takes a beautiful left hand from Banks, flush in the face of Scott there. Picking his shots well, and right and left get through again. So certainly Banks beginning to make some inroads here. Fixed stare of concentration from both boxers. But uh, Banks doing very nicely at the moment, working his way on the inside, going upstairs and downstairs. And uh, impressive the way I thought Ashley Banks began to work that out as the round continued. And you'd be, I think you're well pleased with the way Ashley Banks performed there, Craig. Very much so, very tidy. What you don't want to do is hit one of the scuts hard <laughs> because you'll just annoy them. Um, they're tremendously tough, hugely tough. And you can't hold your feet in front of them because if they plant their feet, they hit even harder. And uh, as the rounds go on, they gain momentum, especially Lewis Scott. So Ash has still got to be very much on his boxing and a uh, variety of shots and disguise his shots as well. He doesn't want to be obvious. Yeah, but there was plenty of variety in that from him, wasn't there, in that first round? Very much. He switched the attack. But uh, forgive me, I'm always nervous when the name Scott's mentioned <laughs> by one of my guys because they, they hit with both hands and are exceptionally tough and yeah. fit. Yeah, he's, uh, he's well built, he's Lewis Scott. Ashley Banks, Ashley Banks then, oh, there's a big left hand to the body straight away from Scott. But Banks responds with some of his own. Head down from Scott, charging in. Being picked off by good shots from Banks, the busier boxer at the moment in terms of the number of punches. Triangle. And uh, Banks keeping on the move, round to his left at the moment. Again, right and left to the body, to the ribs of Scott, covering up. Scott trying to uh, cut him off down the ring, but uh, Banks has turned nicely, but then got turned back onto the ropes. Banks trying to uh, stay at a distance and then unload one twos. Goes downstairs with that left hook again. Again, nice body punching from 
Ashley. That's all. Long range and outer range. Don't be there. So again, Ashley Banks in the centre of the ring, trying not to trade with Scott, but almost getting uh, pulled into too much on the inside. So everyone's calling for him to stay at distance, keep moving. He's done well so far, but Scott, maybe greater physical presence, is certainly a danger in close. And Scott not taking a not taking a backward step, just trying to get in close and land. Banks just trying to uh, land and then get away and then dance around the ring a little bit more. Doesn't want to be on the inside, but he's not averse to uh, going downstairs to the ribs and getting Scott a little bit tied up. The danger is being too close for Ashley Banks. Just keep that distance between them, but Scott trying to cut it down. It's an intriguing contest, and solid left hand from Scott gets through to the body. Uppercut from Scott. Again, a lot of hard work by Banks moving all the while. Scott just coming through with all that physique. And uh, again, Scott was trying to draw Banks in close there and Banks was doing his damnedest to stay at distance. And it was an intriguing little uh, mini contest there. That's right, they'll walk you down, they'll walk you down, they'll stand on you and they'll wait for you to fade. And that's exactly what's happening here. Um, Lewis is just going straight towards Ash, trying to wear him down as best he can, take his movement away from him, and he's having success at that. Uh, we're in for a torrid last round is Ash Banks if he doesn't keep his composure and use his feet. Yeah, certainly interesting, and uh, fitness will tell as well in this in this round because uh, Ashley Banks needs to keep on the move. Scott, you know, will just keep on keeping on. And he'll be there after three rounds, just doing the same thing. Just depends if Ashley Banks can keep dancing around and mixing it up. Here we go, final round of three minutes. Composure, cries uh, Craig to his uh, his boy out in the ring there as Scott tries to uh, carry on the game plan of getting in close to the down end boy. But uh, Banks content to go in, land his shots and then get out again if he possibly can. Ken Brain having a look. Banks with a little glance at the referee. Where are the gaps? Where are the gaps? Good work by Scott though, having got him in close there and then trying to land a couple of head shots. Banks throws the right then steps back. Working his way to the left all the while, keep trying to keep out the range of just that shot, the left hook from S Scott, which him and go. Him he and managed go. to evade. Fascinating and contrast go. of styles. There's a big left hand and by Scott it. again, which missed Banks' his head as he ducked inside it. It's a contest that's still in the balance because. You never know what can happen if Scott lands a big shot or two close in. And that's what he's trying to do now, trying to unload to the body and then to the head. But fair play to Banks. He steps back and throws a left and a right. And now just holds on a little bit as Scott gets inside once more. Get back to range. Get back to range. Bring him up through the middle. So Get back to range. Banks steps back again and Scott comes forward again looking to get him involved in a brawl if he can. Banks will try and push him clear and land some shots of his own. And at, at range again, he's really been made to work hard as Banks is the big train that is Lewis Scott keeps on coming down the track. Brave, brave effort by Ashley Banks. Just trying to 
land his own shots and evade the big shots coming back from his opponent. Tiring now towards the end of the contest. These are difficult moments for the down end boxer as Scut for the Blue Flames keeps piling on the pressure. Still keeping up that pressure is Scut and uh, Banks just being forced to hang on a little bit or wisely hanging on maybe is what I should say. Jump, jump, jump. And Banks just needs to keep him at distance but Scut keeps on coming. The body shot's coming in and a good right hand by Banks but uh, back comes Scut with two of his own. He clips him again with on the side of the head with a right hand and there is the bell to end it. And what a great, great contest. Contrast between the two. And uh, Scott holds his head as if to say, wow, I know I was in a fight there. And he certainly was. And fair play to both boys because they both knew what they had to do and they both kept on trying to do it. Oh, uh, you won't see any better than that. For a clash of stars, that was fantastic. Ashley trying a box, trying a box. Lewis walking him down, not giving him any room, trying to wear him, trying to wear him. Truly is anybody's night, I yeah. can't call that. No, very difficult. Uh, so well, this time we will leave it to the judges and see what they say. And uh, what a great way to end the evening. We'll have the presentations after this, of course, but uh, for the moment anyway, from Richard Latham, from Craig Turner alongside me and me, Nigel Turner, thanks once again for watching us here on the Bristol Sporting Club. Here comes the result. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a unanimous decision to Banks in the red corner. Thank you all very much for your support. We'll see you on the next show.